Welcome everyone to Articulate Chinese Language and Culture, the Shansha Genua of Fantasy TV Dramas. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands where I'm hosting and recording this webinar from, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all are participating in this webinar. We pay our respects to elders, past and present. My name is Meg. I am an external engagement officer in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at the University of Sydney. Um, before we begin, um, just a quick housekeeping. This webinar has live transcription. So to turn, to turn on the transcription, you can go to the toolbar at the bottom, click the little drop down arrow next to the live transcript and hit show subtitle or view full transcript. Um, this webinar will be recorded in case anyone has to leave early and it involves some interactive activities and you are more than welcome to uh, participate. Um, so if you are currently logged in from the mobile, um, it's recommended to join in through a computer that makes it easier for you. And also, if you have any questions you would like to ask during the webinar, feel free to enter your questions on Slido, which I will put a link shortly in the chat. Uh, it's just a www.slido.com and enter articulate. Um, so now I would like to introduce our wonderful presenter, uh, Dr. Yu San. Um, after obtaining her Master of Arts in Research in Chinese Studies from the University of Sydney, Dr. Yu San undertook her PhD in the Intellectual History of Modern Chinese Philosophy at the Australian National University. While focusing primarily on New Confucianism, Yogacara Buddhism, and the Tiong conceptual polarity in traditional Chinese philosophy, she has a broader research interest in Chinese philosophy and religion, as well as the intellectual history in modern China. Her first book, John Shirley's Understanding of Reality and Function, was the first English language monograph entirely on the uh, metaphysics of John Shirley. It presents a detailed examination and analysis of how Jian established and developed his Tian philosophical system between 1920 and 1937. Please welcome Dr. Yu San. Thank you, Meg. Uh, welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, today we'll talk about the Xinxia genre of fantasy TV dramas. So before we start, what type of TV dramas can be called xianxia TV dramas? Firstly, we need to understand the meaning of xianxia first. So as you know, xianxia is a Chinese word and it is composed of two characters, xian and xia. This xian refers to supernatural and immortal beings and xia means chivalrous heroes. Then together, xianxia can be considered to be immortal heroes. Usually in a xianxia TV drama, there should be at least two key elements included. One is Chinese mythology. That is to say, the story of the xianxia drama should be able to be connected with Chinese mythology in some way. For example, it could, uh, it could include the figures, animals, uh, places in Chinese mythology. Um, also, the other key element in a xianxia TV drama is chivalrous spirit, that is to say, the main characters in a Xianxia TV drama uh, typically bears a commission of saving the whole world. And this is uh, uh, his or her chivalrous spirit. In addition, traditional Chinese philosophy has also been integrated into some Xianxia TV dramas. For example, some ideas in Taoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism, three main schools in Chinese philosophy have been integrated into Xianxia TV dramas. Now, 
let's go into more detail of Xianxia TV drama by introducing its so-called ancestor uh, and uh, its types and the stories, its cultural origin, its thought and spirit, audience reception, and also some network buzzwords related to Xianxia TV dramas. This Xianxia TV drama, which is called Xianjian Qi Xia Zhuan, it could be translated into English as Chinese Paladin. Um, this TV drama was broadcast in 2005. Um, so it's widely considered to be the ancestor of Xianxia TV dramas in China. Actually, there are also other, other TV dramas that can be uh, categorized into the type of Xianxia, but this one, this TV drama, uh, is much more popular and it has um, has a large influence on the later developments of Xianxia TV dramas in China. In Xianjian Qi Xia Zhuan, its main characters are Li Xiaoyao, this person, Li Xiaoyao. Uh, Li Xiaoyao is this person. You can see these two pictures. And this man is Li Xiaoyao, the main male character and also this man in the second picture. And Li Xiaoyao is a hot-blooded young man. The main female character is Zhao Lingar. Zhao Lingar is this girl in the first picture and also the girl in the second picture. Zhao Lingar is described as the descendant of Nu Wa, uh, the goddess in traditional Chinese mythology who is believed to have created humans and mended the sky. Now I will briefly introduce the story of this Xianxia TV drama. The story begins with Li Xiaoyao's adventure in an island, uh, which is called Xianling Dao, Xianling Island. There he met Zhao Lingar and fell in love with her. However, Later, Zhao Lingar found that he was a descendant of Nu Wa, and he bears a mission of saving her people from an evil cult. So she broke up with Li Xiaoyao uh, and um, uh, took her responsibilities. Li Xiaoyao was very sad, but uh, later he gradually uh, fell in love with another girl, uh, Lin Yueru, that is this girl in the first picture although he still loved Zhao Lingar. And uh, uh, Lin, Yueru, Lin Yueru later died for, uh, for the sake of Li Xiaoyao and Zhao Lingar. And Zhao Lingar also sat, uh, sat, uh, sacrificed herself for her kingdom at the end. Only Li Xiaoyao left with his and Zhao Lingar's daughter. This story, um, has a hilarious be, uh, beginning, but uh, has a sad ending. We can also see that this story is a combination of romantic love and uh, protection of the world. This Xianxia TV drama uh, has influenced the later development of, of the Xianxia TV dramas in China. And uh, the first type, I will talk about is romantic romantic love and uh, the example Hua Qian Gu, this TV drama. Uh, in this one, the main character, which who is called Hua Qian Gu, is also described as a descendant of Nu Wa. This is um, um, this is because of the influence of Xianjian Qi Xia Zhuan. Now I will talk about this one. So, um. In the following, actually, I will talk three types and uh, three types of Xianxia TV dramas. And the first time type is romantic love. Hua Qian Gu is a typical example. Hua Qian Gu is the name of the main character in this TV drama. And uh, as I have just mentioned, she is a descendant of Nu Wa. And the main male character in this TV series is called Bai Zihua. Bai Zihua is a leading person of all immortals with a responsibility for protecting the whole world. So we can see the two pictures. So they are Bai Zihua and Hua Qiangu. Bai Zihua, uh, Bai Zihua, this man, and Hua Qiangu, this girl. 
Um, Hua Qiangu is the only disciple of Bai Zihua. Actually, Hua Qiangu um, doesn't seem to be a great, uh, doesn't see, seem to have the potential to be a great immortal, but she is diligent and hardworking. And um, because of her kindness, Bai Zihua still accepted her as his only disciple. Um, Hua Qiangu gradually fell in love with Bai Zihua. Um, and um, after Bai Zihua was poisoned um, because she wants to save Bai Zihua, she released, she released the, a tremendous power, which is called Hong Huang Zhi Li. I will talk about this later. And uh, she became uh, a demon god. So um, then everyone in the series wants to kill her because she is a demon god. Actually, Bai Zihua also fell in love with Hua Qiangu, but she, uh, because she is a leading person of all immortals, he is not allowed to have romantic feelings for others. However, finally, she supported Hua Qiangu and uh, revealed his feelings and decided to be uh, together with Hua Qiangu. So this story is about forbidden love. This is still a romantic love story. Then the second type of t uh, Xianxia TV dramas is, uh, sorry, uh, I need to talk about another example of the first type romantic love. And this one is very famous, is San Sheng San Shi Shi Li Tao Hua. In English, it's translated as eternal love. The, uh, this is a new one, and uh, it was broadcast in 2017. So in this TV series, there are also two main characters. One is Bai Qian. Bai Qian is this girl, the girl in the three pictures. So this is Bai Qian. Uh, Bai Qian is one of the rulers in Qingqiu. Qingqiu is a place um, that appears in Chinese mythology. And the other main character is called Ye Hua, the man in the last two pictures. Ye Hua is a prince of the race of dragon. So the title in the title of this TV series is called San Sheng San Shi Shi Li Tao Hua. San Sheng San Shi means three lives. Shi Li Tao Hua means 10 miles of peach blossom. So this story is about the, the love between Bai Qian and Ye Hua uh, during three lives. In the first life, Ye Hua is this golden lotus in the first picture. And Bai Qian is the girl who takes care of this golden lotus. At that time, Ye Hua likes Bai Qian. Um, of course, Bai Qian doesn't know this lotus is actually a person. In the second life, Bai Qian lost her memory as an immortal and became a mortal person. And Ye Hua is the prince of the race of dragon. They met each other and fell in love with each other. In the third life, um, Bai Qian recovered her memory, but she lost her memory of the experience with Ye Hua. But they still met each other and fell in love with each other. Okay, so this is a story of this uh, TV drama is about love of three lives. Now we will move on to the second type of Xianxia TV dramas that is about courage and perseverance. About this type, we have two typical examples. The first one is called Qing Yun Zhi. Qing Yun Zhi uh, translated into English as the legend of Chusen. Qing Yun Zhi was broadcast in 2016 and uh, its main characters is Zhang Xiaofan. The main uh, male character is Zhang Xiaofan. That is uh, the man in the first picture. Zhang Xiaofan is a disciple of an orthodox sect. The main female character is called Bi Yao. That is the, the girl on the left in the second picture. This is uh, Bi Yao. Bi Yao is a younger leader of a so-called evil sect. Mm, Zhang Xiaofan at first uh, um, struggles with catching up with his peers because he has a um, low weight, the low weight. 
um, but uh, he is diligent and hardworking, and uh, he had some adventures and opportunities after which he became stronger and uh, uh, has uh, has power. Um, and then, uh, and Zhang Xiaofan met Bi Yao in the TV series, and uh, um, just like the other two TV series we talked about, they fell in love with each other. However, because Zhang Xiaofan is a disciple of an orthodox sect, and Bi Yao uh, is, belongs to a so-called evil sect. Although they love each other, they cannot be together because of the incompatibility between good and evil. At the end, Bi Yao died for Zhang Xiaofan, and uh, Zhang Xiaofan also realized that um, he should be together with Bi Yao and uh, save Bi Yao. Um, actually, along with Zhang Xiaofan's girls, uh, he continues to ponder over the question, what is good and what is evil? And at the end, he uh, broke the conventions and changed his understanding of this question. This is also a reason that he think he should be together with Biao. Although this one also includes a love story, uh, it's more about Zhang Xiaofan's courage and the perseverance. Now, we will have a look at the other example, which is called Ze Tianji, Fighter of the Destiny. In this TV series, actually, there is only one character who is more important than others. Uh, this person is called Chen Changsheng. Chen Changsheng is an orphan with a high intelligence. However, um, he is doomed to have only 20 years of his life. Mm, he doesn't, uh, he wants to have a longer life. So um, he continues to try to find ways to extend his lifespan. He is very clever and uh, uh, he has um, a large amount of knowledge. Um, finally, he changed his own destiny. So this story is about uh, Chen Changsheng's effort to change destiny. Chen Changsheng is this person, uh, the man in the first, first picture, and uh, also the man in, in the second picture. Uh, although this story uh, also includes some other figures and includes some other themes like friendship and uh, romantic love, it is more like uh, is, it is more about Chen Changsheng's um, courage and the perseverance in achieving his goal. So this is the second type of Xianxia TV dramas. Now let's have a look at the third type that is understanding between bosom friends or soulmates. This type is quite different from the previous uh, the two uh, two previous types because it doesn't include a main female character, but uh, has two male, uh, main male characters. So I will also take two TV dramas as examples. The first one is called Chen Qingling, The Untamed. This TV series was broadcast in 2019, and its main characters are Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji. Wei Wuxian is the man in the first picture, and he is a mischievous, um, uh, mischievous guy with a chivalrous spirit. And Lan Wangji is a, is a guy in the second picture, and he is an inflexible person with a sense of justice. Um, they, so they met each other and became soulmates. Uh, in this story, Wei Wuxian was misunderstood by almost all of the people in this TV series. And Lan Wangji is the only one who understands and supports him. So this story is about unjust treatment and unwavering support. And the second example is called Shan He Ling, Word of Honor. This is quite new. It was broadcast in last year. In this TV series, there are also two main male characters. One is called Zhou Si Shu, that is the person in the first picture, and uh, the person on the right in the second picture. Uh, Zhou Si Shu is a leader 
of an assassin organization. The other main character is called Wen Kexin, that is the person on the left in the second picture, and he is the leader of a group of wicked people. Um, Zhou Zishu is very, um, feels very guilty because he killed some good people, and then uh, he resigned from his position and decided to travel around. And Wen Kexin, although Wen Kexin is a kind of person inside, but because he um he is the lead the leader of a group of wicked people and did some bad things, he also feels guilty. Then they met each other and helped is each other with their self redemption and self forgiveness. So this is a story in this TV series Shan He Ling. Okay. So now we have talked about the three types of uh, uh, Xianxia TV dramas. Now let's have a look at um, the cultural origin of Xianxia dramas. So um, actually, the Xianxia genre can be traced back to very early Chinese literature, in particular, Shanghai Jing, so Shanghai Jing, classic of mountains and seas a classical Chinese text about uh, geography, figures, animals, and the places. And uh, the story of Nü Wa, the story of Nü Wa is very popular among Xianxia dramas. Um, for example, uh, the descendant of Nü Wa appears in Xianjian Qixia Zhuan and Hua Qiangu, like we just mentioned. In Xianjian Qixia Zhuan, the descendant of Nü Wa is Zhao Lingar. And in Hua Qiangu, the descendant of Nü Wa is called Hua Qiangu, the main character in this TV series. Now let's uh, watch two clips from these two TV series to have a look at uh, uh, how, how they talked about uh, uh, this, this story of Nü Wa or the descendant of Nü Wa. You can see that in the TV series, Xianjian Qixia Zhuan, Zhao Lingar, um, when she realized that she was a descendant of Nü Wa, she appears to have a human's head, but uh, uh, a snake's body. So this is what Nü Wa looks like in people's imagination, like this. In Hua Qiangu, although Hua Qiangu uh, does not appear like this, we can also have a look at how they talked about this. So Nü Wa the Hou Ren means the descendant of Nü Wa. Hua Qiangu used her blood to release the strong power Hong Huang Zhili, uh, and later she will become uh, the demon god. Uh, usually, the descendant of Nü Wa in Xianxia TV dramas has a very strong power. For example, they can let the flowers open again, like this kind of thing. Let's continue. There are also some animals that appear in Chinese mythology uh, that have been included in Xianxia TV dramas. For example, Jiu Wei Hu. Jiu Wei means nine tails. Hu is fox. So this is a kind of animal that appears in uh, Shanghai Jing and also many other novels. The fox with nine tails. And uh, it appears in San Sheng San Shi Shi Li Tao Hua. Uh, so this is uh, the fox with nine tails, Jiu Wei Hu. And also there are four, uh, four animals that appear in Zuo Zhuan, the commentary of Zuo. So this is a um, classical Confucian, uh, it's a Confucian classic. And also Shi Ji, historical records. Uh, which, which is an important uh, history uh, on ancient Chinese history. And uh, these four animals also appear in San Sheng, San Shi, Shi Li Tao Hua. Now let's watch two clips about uh, Jiu Wei Hu and also about these four animals. These four animals are called Qiong Qi, Tao Tie, Tao Wu, and Hun Dun. Okay, now let's have a look. Um, as I mentioned, traditional Chinese philosophy has also been included in Xianxia TV dramas. Uh, for example, there is a statement 
repeatedly said by Zhang Xiaofan in Qingyunzhi. In Qingyunzhi, and uh, this statement is, 天地不仁，以万物为刍狗 So you can also read the pinyin here. It means heaven and earth are not humane, taking the mirrored things to be straw dogs. This statement originates in Lao Zi, uh, in Lao Zi's Dao De Jing, Dao De Jing, the book of the Way and the Virtue. It was composed by Lao Zi, a Taoist uh, philosopher. And uh, this one, uh, this statement expresses the idea that uh, heaven and earth don't have human feelings and uh, they are not biased, they are fair to everything. Actually, um, this, this idea expresses that there's no God and everything just follows the natural rules. So um, in Qingyunzhi, this sta statement is repeatedly, repeatedly said by Zhang Xiaofan along with his girls and along with his pondering over uh, the question, what is evil and what is good? And another one, Another statement also appears in Qingyunzhi is this one: "Wei tian di li xin, wei sheng min li ming, wei wang sheng ji jue xue, wei wan shi kai tai ping." This statement was said by Zhang Zai, a new Confucian in the Song dynasty of Chinese history, to express his ambition. This statement means to establish heart for heaven and earth. Set up destiny for common people, carry on the lost knowledge for previous sages, and start a time of peace and tranquility for 10,000 generations. Okay, so the first one is from Taoism, and the second one is from Confucianism. Now let's have a look at the clips to see how these statements appear in Qingyunzhi. So this statement um, is uh, the words Zhang Xiaofan's master wants him to remember as a motto and also as his ambition, as, just as Zhang Zai. So Zhang Xiaofan in, in the clip will go, to, uh, the, will go to the real world and uh, his master wants him to uh, memorize this statement. Okay, so this is about the traditional Chinese philosophy. Now let's talk about the thought and the spirit of Xianxia TV dramas. Um, no matter what story a Xianxia drama tells, it must follow a constant theme. That is to use one's own power to pu uh, punish the evil and praise the good. And the main characters in a Xianxia drama uh, usually have a strong mind and a great personality. They may be weak at the beginning, but uh, later after they had some opportunities and also some adventures, they became stronger and stronger and finally defeated their enemies at the end. Um, and uh, just like some uh, Western, uh, Western superhero products, such as uh, Spider-Man and uh, Captain America, uh, there is a belief in Xianxia TV dramas that is with great power comes great responsibility. For example, in Hua Qiangu, um, this, this idea uh, is followed by Hua Qiangu and uh, also by Zi Hua. Uh, in Chinese, this, this idea is 能力越大, 责任越大. In Hua Qiangu, Bai Zi Hua takes this as his motto and uh, his disciple Hua Qiangu also repeatedly says this and uh, takes this statement as uh, her own motto. And um, uh, about the ultimate purpose of Xianxia characters, as heroes with extraordinary strength, it's normally for, those, uh, for them to guard all people, Cang Sheng. So this Cang Sheng can also be translated as all sentient beings. And um, then after they have completed their tasks, usually 
uh, those heroes prefer to go away and live in seclusion with their lover, who is um, usually the other main character in the TV series. Um, we can we can use a Chinese sentence, 事了拂衣去, 深藏功与名, uh, to describe this situation. And this is the ultimate romance in such stories. If you want to uh, know the specific meaning of this sentence, you can just Google it and you will know its meaning and origin. Okay, so this is the uh, thought and the spirit. Now let's have a look at um, the reception of Xianxia TV dramas uh, by uh, looking at some online discussions. So we can have a look at this picture. They are all Chinese characters, I know. And uh, this one is about a question. This quest question is called, It means that, uh, do you have any good Xianxia TV dramas to recommend to me like that? This is a question. And we can see uh, someone replied to this question. And in, uh, in this person's reply, we can see the, the title, Xianjian Qixia Zhuan, Xingyun Zhi, Hua Qiangu. This is a wrong character. It should be Hua Qiangu. And San Sheng San Shi, Shi Li Tao Hua. So we know this, this TV series are quite popular. And we can also have a look at this picture. So uh, the, for the first article, it's about a, a Xianxia TV drama, which is called Liu Li. Liu Li is also a very interesting and a popular Xianxia TV drama in recent years. And um, on the bottom, uh, this is about a very popular Xianxia TV drama, but I didn't include the whole content of this article. So this, is, this also talks about um, popular Xianxia TV dramas. Uh, there are many articles like this appearing online. Uh, so if you want to Google, you can just try Xianxia TV dramas, then you will see many articles about them. Also, Xianxia TV dramas have, uh, have, help, uh, have helped revive classical Chinese clothes. So these are uh, some clothes for sale, and you can see that they are all about the clothes appearing in San Sheng San Shi Shi Li Tao Hua. And uh, uh, the girl here is Bai Qian and her clothes is very beautiful. And this shop sells clothes like this. So you can see the popularity of Xianxia TV dramas. Although Xianxia TV dramas are very welcomed by audience, there are still some debates about them. This is based on the fact that many of the dramas are adapted from popular web novels of the same theme. For example, Hua Qiangu was adapted from the web novel with the same name. Uh, Qing Yunzhi was adapted from the web novel Zhu Xian, Jade Dynasty. And Shan Heling was adapted from the web novel Tian Ya Ke, Far Away Wanderers. Then this caused a problem. Some novel readers are not satisfied with the adapted TV dramas. They are not satisfied with the quality of the adaptation. For example, they believe that the actors and the actresses uh, didn't perform well, like this kind of thing. And also they believe that the TV adaptation has denatured the core value of the original work to pursue commercial success. For example, uh, they believe that Hua Qiangu actually is more like uh, the story of Cinderella that is to say, a girl is, uh, <clears throat> is bullied by her peers, but is appreciated by a powerful man, like this kind of thing. So they believe that uh, this adaptation, the pur purpose of this adaptation um, caters the taste of Chinese young people who are busy working during daytime and who only have some free time at dinner or before bedtime. And, and uh, in their view, uh, Chinese young people don't have time or don't want to explore the deeper meaning of life, but feel satisfied when they have sympathy with the characters in Xianxia TV dramas. And um, 
The novel readers also believe that those TV dramas have become superficial fast food recreation uh, because of this adaptation. So this is um, some, uh, some main points they make. Although um, some people are not satisfied with Xinxia TV dramas, uh, some network buzzwords related to these dramas still become very popular. Now we will take several words as examples. The first one is Hong Huang Zhi Li. So we have already mentioned this one. This word is from Hua Qian Gu. Uh, so it means mystical and tremendous power. That is the power Hua Qian Gu rele uh, released and uh, obtained before he be uh, be uh, before she became uh, the demon god. The second word is Li Jie. This word is from San Sheng San Shi Shi Li Tao Hua. It means experiencing, uh, experience sufferings. So Li is a Jing Li. It means to experience and Jie is sufferings. So for example, um, when you have a very hard examination, you can say, Wo zai li jie, I'm experience, uh, experiencing suffering. And this word li jie also indicates that after this suffering, you will get to a higher level. And uh, the third word is si hai ba huang, also from san sheng san shi shi li tao hua. It means four seas and eight directions. It can also be translated as the whole world. And uh, the next one, liang liang, also from san sheng san shi shi li tao hua. So we can see this TV series is quite popular. And liang liang means be failed, no hope. For example, if you believe you uh, you fail, so your examination uh, must be failed. You can just say, 我的考试凉凉了. 考试 is examination. So my exam is 凉凉了. Then it means there's no hope about my, my exam, about the result of my exam. And uh, next one, 亲亲. So 亲亲 means dear, darling. This comes from 青云志. For example, we can say 亲亲小凡. So Zhang Xiaofan, we can call him 亲亲小凡. Then it means dear Xiaofan, darling Xiaofan. The last one, Lang Lang Ding. Uh, so this one refers to the couple Wen Kexing and uh, Zhou Zishu. Uh, because Wen Kexing is quite unrestrained and Zhou Zishu has some nails in his body. This Ding, Ding means nails. So um, the audience call them Lang Lang Ding together. So they together are called Lang Lang Ding. And this word is also very popular now. Okay, so we have uh, talked about uh, the Xianxia TV dramas now. Let's have the quiz time to review what we have learned. Meg, could you help with this? Okay, now the first question, what is the Shanghai Jing about? So you remember Shanghai Jing is a classical Chinese text. It's about what? So Shanghai Jing is about uh, geography and also some figures, animals, places, and some stories, mythology like that. So we should choose D, all of the above. Okay, so for the second question, who is described as a descendant of Nu Wa? Do you remember? Lin Yuanru is her or not? Hua Qiangu, Bai Qian, and Bi Yao. Do you remember the stories? So, oh, very good. Ye Hua Qiangu is correct. Ye Hua Qiangu is described as a descendant of Nu Wa, right? Mm, Bai Qian, Bai Qian is a fox with nine tails. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the third question. Mm, which TV drama is about the main role's effort to change his destiny? Do you remember? Qing Yun Zhi, Ze Tian Ji, Chen Xing Ling, or Shang He Ling. Which one? Wow, Qing Yun Zhi and Ze Tian Ji. Both TV series are about courage and perseverance, but Ze Tian Ji is correct one. Yeah. Okay, 
let's go to the next question. Mm, which statement is incorrect about the meaning of 天地不仁,以万物为刍狗? This one comes from a Taoist classic. Which one is incorrect? Yes, totally correct. <laughs> the world has only dogs. So you know this is the incorrect one. Mm, perfect. Okay, let's go to the last question now. What does Hong Huang Zhili mean? A, lack of power. B, mystical and tremendous power. C, power of common people. D, spiritual power. Which one? So you know Hong Huang Zhili comes from Hua Qiangu. Oh, very good. Yes, we should choose B, mystical and tremendous power. Okay, Meg, I think we can just stop here. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of the time. Thank you very much. I think I spent uh, a long time for this session. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, you. We have a few questions actually submitted. So I've noticed a common theme is mystical historical settings. Why are Chinese audiences so intrigued by love stories in mystical settings? Mm, yeah, uh, I think um, for those people who are interested in love stories, uh, maybe they are are bored with the normal love stories and uh, uh, this kind of setting, like a mystical historical settings, uh, gives them fresh feelings and uh, uh, it can provide a more complicated story for the uh, for the romantic love between pe two people. Yeah. So uh, besides the love story, we can also have a look at uh, um. A world that is not real and is more interesting, and it has um, a mystical power uh, that our real world doesn't have. Yeah. Thank you. And Thank there's you. Um, another question there. Mm -hmm. um, so, when there are two male leading roles and they have affinity towards each other, can they be taken? Can they be taken as figures of uh, boys' love series in? Asian dramas. Yeah, this is an interesting question. Um, yes, I, I believe so. So two male leading roles actually um, often considered as a couple. And this kind of, of story uh, is called uh, like a danmei. <laughs> so this is a word in Chinese. I can type in chat box. So this is called danmei. So danmei, this word means like two boys in love, actually two boys in love. But the, the interesting thing is the audience is usually uh, female, actually. Um, girls are more interested in this kind of series. Yes, it can be considered uh, as figures of boys love series in in, uh, in Asian dramas, right? Mm, Dan Mei Ju. Yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, now I will briefly introduce um, uh, the units in Chinese studies at the University of Sydney. So firstly, you need to choose your pathway. So it depends on your previous experience of learning Chinese language. There are three pathways, introductory, intermediate, and advanced. It depends on your level. If you are uh, complete beginners or students with very little language experience, you should choose introductory. And if you already have some knowledge about Chinese language, um, then you should choose intermediate pathway. And also, if you have a higher level of your Chinese language, then you should choose advanced. You can have a look at the details later. So this is about your previous experience. And also you need to choose your goal depending on where you want your Chinese language and the cultures to take you. So if you want to take Chinese studies as, as your major, uh, then you need to achieve these, these things. So you will take uh, eight semester length units over at least three years. And also uh, you need to take, um, you need to have a combination of language and cultural units and also one semester length interdisciplinary projects. And also in country studies uh, is 
strongly encouraged. I will also briefly uh, explain in country study later. And if you want to take Chinese studies as your minor, then you will have six semester length units, usually over three years, and a combination of language and culture units, and also in country study may be an option. And there are also some other units like Experience China. Uh, if you take this unit, then you will meet the teachers from Peking University, and those teachers will um, teach you basic Chinese language skills and knowledge, and they will also introduce Chinese culture by, take, uh, by taking you around in Beijing uh, like this. And uh, then let's have a look at the three pathways. So first is introductory. So uh, for each pathway, you ha will have three levels of units of study, 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. For each level, you will have some units to choose. For example, for this 1,000 level units, uh, you will have Chinese 1A for beginners, 1B for beginners, uh, and for this three, uh, 2,000 level units of study, you will have like Chinese lower intermediate one uh, and two and the classical Chinese A, you will also have some culture units to choose like intro, uh, introduction to Chinese literature, reading Chinese philosophy and religion, communication and the social change in China and uh, understanding news about China. Okay, uh, so for 3000 level units, you will have this, including upper intermediate language units and advanced Chinese language units and upper advanced Chinese language units and higher advanced. And also we have chi Chinese for business purposes, uh, this kind of units. And uh, for the culture units, you will have Chinese translation, uh, topics in Chinese literature and uh, Chinese cinema uh, and uh, classical Chinese poetry, uh, both are very interesting units. And also Chinese interpreting and uh, multilingualism in the Sinosphere like this. So uh, for, for the language classes, we also include um, uh, cultures, Chinese culture while teaching. For example, um, I study Buddhism and Confucianism uh, as um, the main focus of my research. Actually, I my uh, my research focuses on Chinese philosophy. And um, when I teach, sometimes I have also included some Chinese culture uh, into my teaching, and also uh, including contemporary Chinese cultures like this. Uh, so I think other other teachers also do the same way. Um, and um, then for the other two pathways, intermediate and uh, advanced. So at each level, 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000, you also have some units to choose. Okay, so you can see there are many, and you can also have a look at the details later. So uh, the units at these levels are similar uh, to those we have already introduced, but uh, because you have different pathways, you may have different units to choose. Okay, so this is an uh, advanced pathway. You can have a look later. Uh, in addition to those units, we also have some activities in Chinese studies. For example, we have uh, in-country study. This unit is about the Chinese uh, mainly about the Chinese culture. And uh, as I just said, we have experience, experience China. This is a, a intensive three-week Chinese program. And also uh, interdisciplinary projects you may need to do. Uh, and also we have Chinese table and a Chinese chair. So these are two programs uh, in Chinese studies. Chinese Table is a program that aims to help those students with their Chinese learning, Chinese language learning. Uh, in this program, you can meet some native Chinese speakers 
um, they are also students in our university. You can make friends with them and learn from them and discuss with them. You can also practice your Chinese language. And for this Chinese, Chinese chair, um, so usually we will introduce the Chinese culture and uh, sometimes students present themselves on some topics about culture. And sometimes we, we also have some activities related to Chinese culture, for example, to make dumplings, to watch a movie, like this kind of thing. So it's very fun. <laughs> so these are the, some activities and the other units in Chinese studies. Um, if you are interested, you are welcome to contact us about them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation and sharing about the Chinese studies. So if anyone would like to learn more about um, what it's like to study at the University of um, Sydney, um, there is an open day coming up very soon. Uh, open day is on Saturday the 27th of August. Um, if you'd like to just walk around on campus what it's like, I am more than welcome to um, and I talk to some of the students who are actually studying at the University of Sydney. It's a great opportunity. Um, we also have a few more webinars coming up. If you enjoyed today's uh, webinar, it is a part of the Articulate series, which we look into the actual subject disciplines. Um, we have, if you're taking French, uh, continuous or extension for stage six students. We do have a articulate webinar on the 14th of September. And also we have a social media, digital technology, uh, digital safety topic on 19th of October in term four. Um, if you are just in general wanting to learn more about what it's like to study languages and pathways to global literacy, we do have a Wednesday webinar series um, next month in August, so please do um, check them out. I just wanted to thank um, uh, Dr. Yusan for the, her precious um, time while she's uh, preparing for the busy time to come. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you.